All right, this is the last portion, comproportionation reactions. Uh, they're kind of similar to this proportionation, except that typically what happens here is that you have two different species of the same element, one that is reduced, one that is oxidized. And the idea is that because they're in contact with each other and they don't overlap in the diagram, they have the potential for reacting. And the reaction is going to happen such that you get to the same overall reactant, or excuse me, the same overall product, in this case N2. So that's the product that you're going to be forming when ammonium and nitrate react with each other. So we're going to use uh, the same rule that we performed before for these proportionation reactions in, you know, in the, from the point of view of comproportionation. We look at the charges of the individuals, and if you do that, you're going to find out that nitrogen has a 3 minus charge in the first reactant, a, flat, a 5 plus charge on the second reactant, um, which means that the 3 minus to 0, if you subtract those two numbers, it's minus 3 electrons, plus 5 minus 0 will be 5 electrons. And um, this is per nitrogen center, right? We have one nitrogen for the first reactant, one nitrogen for the second reactant, so technically the fractions can multiply by one. Um, but we're going to apply the same set of rules that we did for this proportionation, but this time around for the reactants, because that's where we have the multiple species present. They're both giving the same product, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen to the products until we first balance the reactants. So, as such, to get the electrons to equal each other, we multiply the top portion by three, the bottom portion by five. So doing that, we have to also apply the 5 to the corresponding reactant, and we have to apply the 3 that we have here to the corresponding reactant. Notice that I haven't touched the nitrogen yet. Uh, but when this happens, we have 5 nitrogens from the ammonium, we have 3 nitrogens from the nitrate, so that's 8 nitrogens altogether. So in order to balance this, we simply have to multiply the N2 by 4. All right, now the electrons are balanced, the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen atoms are balanced. Now we balance the oxygens. And we have a total of 3 times 3, so 9 uh, oxygens on the left side. And to balance the oxygens on the right side, we have to add 9 waters. That means that now we have 18 protons on the right side of the equation. We have uh, 20 protons on the left side of the equation. So that means that we're going to need to add an extra, so 18 protons on the right side, right? So we need to add an extra two protons to balance the electrons. Um, it's just made the number of hydrogens. So if you look at the charges, we have five plus one, which is plus one, minus three, which is minus two overall charge on the left side. And over here, we have a plus two overall charge. So this works out. So as you can see, the procedure works the same way um, as we saw for these proportionation reactions, but this time around, you focus on the reactants. Okay, so with that example, we finished the lecture. We got all the particular components present. Um, and by the way, you could balance this proportionation and comproportionation reactions using the half redox method. You just have to make sure that at the end, you go with the lowest ratio. All right, so with this, I'll see you in the next lecture series. Bye-bye.